Hi, you're watching TechCrunch TV. My name is Colleen Taylor. Here with me in the studio, I'm very pleased to have Charles Huang, who is probably best known as the co-founder of Guitar Hero, the co-creator of Guitar Hero. And today, he is back with a new startup called Green Throttle, which just raised $6 million in venture capital funding. So, welcome, Charles. Thank you, Colleen. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much for coming here. So, we obviously have some things. This is green throttle here that I want to talk about, but maybe um, really quickly we could talk about the, the evolution to this point um, from the time that you left Activision, sort of what you've been doing these past couple of years. Sure, sure. <coughs> so I was at Activision uh, making Guitar Hero games until uh, April 2010. And uh, after that <coughs> left, took some time off, and uh, you know, we're kind of exploring. Guitar Hero, you know, we took that from zero back in 2005 to at its peak a billion and a half dollars in 2008 and uh, looked around to see like where else in video games is there an opportunity to build uh, a, you know another billion dollar business and uh, kind of took some time looking and, and, and you know have uh, been working on this particular idea as what we think is the, the best place in video games to build a next uh, billion dollar business. Great. Um, so I want to get more into all these details about the funding and everything, but I really just want to see what it is. Sure. So can we just take a look and can you explain to me what we're looking at here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'd love to show you. So we've got some toys here. What we've got here, first of all, is this is a, uh, a Kindle Fire yes. HD. So uh, it runs Android, a as you know. Uh, what we have here is our interface, which you can see on the, on the big screen behind us, which our interface here transforms the touch mobile interface into what we call a television UI. So what that means is these controllers, these two controllers, game controllers, are paired to this device via Bluetooth. Okay. And I can navigate the entire screen from my couch in my living room I and see. not have to get up to touch the screen on the mobile device just using the controller. So you can see here that I'm, I'm navigating through from game to game uh, using this controller and I can launch a game if I want to and, and this, this game I paused, uh -huh. uh, and I can start playing this game using the controllers. And so what we've done with uh, <coughs> this technology is transform tablets and phones into consoles that you run games on a big screen, play with controllers, with friends and family in the living room. So this is incredible because what you would normally do, you know, to play this game is it's it's all touch interface. Right. How did you make it so that these controllers could understand and and I mean there are so many different buttons and switches and things here. Right. You know where this is just one single you know your finger. Right. <laughs> so how how did, uh, what's the technology? How did you do this? Well, so the, the the games are actually natively designed to play with controllers. Oh, okay. And they're also designed to work on a big screen TV. So. What we found, you know, my background making console video games, is that people play games on TV differently than they play games on tablets or phones or PC. And primarily, uh, Guitar Hero was a great party game, right? And so people gather with their friends and family in front of a TV, and you play games together, traditionally. And that was the type of game we wanted to build. Uh, and so that's why we set down this path was, even though it's running on a device that's normally a personal device, the game itself is designed to run on a big screen TV where you can gather with your friends and family and you can play games together. So you could pick up a controller, I could pick up a controller, and we're playing games together on the device, but we're looking at the same screen on the television. Right. And so would this does this work with practically any game that's that's in the app store here or, or how many things can it work with? Right. So we ourselves are developing games uh, and we, we will have uh, about five games that we're developing ourselves that can be played with our controllers uh, on any Android device. And uh, we're also allowing third-party developers. We've got a program where we uh, developer launched here in December where we're giving SDKs uh, and controllers to developers who are interested in building television games on Android devices. Uh, and so third-party developers will be making games for the platform as well. I see. So it seems like you're just opening up this new kind of this new opportunity. Why would a developer w want to do that? What what are some particular things that maybe they could do through the Green Throttle platform that they couldn't on other platforms? Right, that's a good question. So, uh, you know, fundamentally, I think games that run on a four to five inch phone screen are different than games that run on a seven to inch, ten inch tablet screen than games that run on a thirty to fifty inch television screen. 
So besides the fact that you can make really rich graphics uh, for a 30 to 50 inch screen that consumers would actually be able to see the difference, um, you know, th those, those games really belong on a big screen TV where, where you can appreciate all the beautiful art that developers put into the game. And then the second category of games is multiplayer sort of shared gaming experiences, right? That was the, the, the games that we've worked on before was all about playing games with your friends and your family. Uh, and those types of games today aren't possible on a small you know, phone or tablet. But we want to enable developers to make those type of games. But on the devices that they're familiar with, you know, Android, iOS, phones, and tablets. Uh, so the development environment they're familiar with, but for the consumer user experience, it'll be shared games on a big screen TV. I see. And so my initial question, I guess I had gotten it wrong because I said that this is made for the touchscreen interface, but can you play any of your games also you know, without the controllers, or is it just primarily to use in this? Uh, yes. So we, we are actually making games that can be played two ways. So this game particular on the screen you see here, Crystal Swarm, is meant to be played on a television screen. Okay. We, we have another game that we're making, which is uh, has two modes. One is you can play it while it, you're on a mobile device away from the TV. Uh, you're using the touch screen. And then when you're at home, you can plug it into a TV and play with it using controllers. So I think that's another thing that mobile devices enable you to do, is to be able to play different, you know, the, or the same game in different environments, whether you're out and about, and you can use the touch screen and play the game one way, or you come home, plug it into your TV, sit down on your couch, and play it a, a second way. Okay. And can you also tell me about the availability? Like, when will I be able to buy this in a store, or, or what's the status of all that? Sure. So, uh, for consumers, they'll be able to buy the product starting in first quarter 2013. Okay. So, uh, developers were shipping uh, controllers and SDKs to in uh, December 2012, so next month. Um, and uh, we expect that, um, you know, by the first quarter that they will have games available for consumers when we launch in, in first quarter. And what's the revenue situation like? Are these games going to be free or and then what's the revenue split if on any of them that you do charge for with the developers themselves? Right. That, that's a great question because I think that's uh, a point that we want to emphasize to developers is we actually don't take a cut of their revenue stream. So, uh, you know, they'll, they'll submit their games to Google Play or Amazon's uh, marketplace. Uh, like they normally would, and those guys take whatever percentage they take. Uh, for them, for developers to make a game that works with our controllers, we actually don't charge them anything. Uh, we just have an open SDK, and we want as many developers to build games that are compatible with our controllers as possible. I see, because the way that you all make money is by selling these controllers, and, and that's basically the only way that you guys are going to make money, or is or how else? Uh, that, that's one of the primary ways. So we, 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 we're going to build and sell controllers, and we're going to build and sell different controller. So this is our first controller. Uh, the reason we started here is because I jokingly refer to this as the, the QWERTY keyboard of video games, right? Uh -huh. it's, it's the same base uh, <coughs> control. Uh, but we're also going to build other controllers that will enable gamers to play games in different ways. So that's one way we'll make money. The second way we'll, way we'll make money is uh, through the games themselves. So we'll build first party games and we'll sell those games. I see. And then uh, we'll allow third party game developers to build games for, for our controllers as well. Great. And I want to ask also about, you know, the team, you know, the company itself, and right. then the plans now that you've got this nice boost of cash, you know, for growth going forward. Sure. <coughs> so the team, um, the, the genesis for this idea actually dates back, I guess you could say, to, to, to my junior high years. One of my co-founders, Matt Crowley, he and I have been friends since junior high. Wow. In fact, we grew up playing Atari 2600 games. That, that's how old we are. <laughs> <laughs> we were playing Atari 2600 games in the basement of his parents' house. Um, and, and what we learned was that um, you know, playing games with each other has built this lifelong friendship for us. And so that's the type of experience we want to build, is to allow friends and family to play games together. Um, and, and so you know, we started this company. His background, and actually my other co-founder, Carl Townsend, their background is actually in mobile devices. So they've built some of the great mobile devices, um, including uh, Carl was the lead hardware engineer on the first Palm Pilot and the Handspring Trio. Uh, they worked together on the, the Palm Pre, Palm's first smartphone. Uh, so they've been working on mobile devices since the beginning. So we have this combination of, of games and, and mobile knowledge that we're trying to bring together. 
I see. And and what's the total staff number? And is that something that you're going to need to scale up here as you go into production? Yeah. So so right now there's 12 of us okay. <laughs> riding around in Santa Clara building games and controllers. Uh, and, and so we're definitely looking to expand uh, because we have a lot of games that we want to build. Uh, <coughs> and um, that that to your other question earlier about what you know what we're going to do with this uh, six million dollars in funding that we raise from Trinity and DCM. Um, is, um, you know, I, I can't think of a better way to spend $6 million of someone else's money other than making great games, hopefully, that people will love to play. Right. So uh, we're going to devote, devote a lot of our effort in the next year to just trying to make as many fun games as we possibly can. It's interesting because you see this um, games have gotten so individual and the mobile mm -hmm. movement has made it right. so much that people play these individual games. It seems like almost this is a business opportunity that you saw and a great opening to have a great company but then also it seems like there's something personal here too, like a personal belief that you have about what gaming should really be. Yes, I, I definitely believe so. When, when I pick up a, a, a tablet or phone and I look into it, I've now shut you off and everybody else around me off, right? And, and while they're fantastic devices, uh, that's part of what's crept into games and other forms of content is this isolation of sort of an individual once they start using the device. And what we wanted to do was to reintroduce you know, on the same device, reimagine what it means to like play games with friends, family. When when both of us look at this screen, right. we're sharing this experience. Mm -hmm. We're able to interact with each other, and that really is the magic of games. You know, like Guitar Hero. It wasn't so much what was going on on the screen; it was what was going on between people playing the games that made the experience fun. And that's what we want to reintroduce back into sort of games, specifically mobile games, because we feel like that is an element that somehow has disappeared over the last few years. Great stuff. Well, Charles Huang, thank you for coming by and showing us Green Throttle, and uh, good luck. Yeah, thank you. Thank <laughs> you for your time, Colleen.